Okay, in this video lesson, I want to talk about briefly about easing in and easing out. But I think the main thing I want to talk about are action lines and smears and motion blur, things that you can use in place of squash and stretch to convey rapid movement on screen here. So just to kind of ignore what I have over here on the right right now, and you can see I have a ball right here, and it's going to ease out and ease in of its position right here. And so this animation of the ball is happening on this layer right here. So you can see the initial frame lasts about six frames, and the animation overall is about 26 frames long. And you can see I have this indicating the, the nature of the ease out and the ease in. So our first frame is here. We're going to have two frames kind of spaced out towards the beginning as it moves from left to right. And it's going to traverse a larger amount of space right here for this in between. And then it's going to traverse some more space to get to there. And then we're going to have a lot of frames. It looks like five frames as it kind of slows down and reaches its end position right there. And so when you do that, instead of spacing these in betweens evenly, so hypothetically, I could take those frames and just line them up like that in terms of their spacing. And the ball would almost work as if it was a, if you're working in After Effects or something like that, and then you just did like an, um, a tween. So I can actually convey that right here. So I'm just gonna do a drawing and I'm gonna make this bitmap, add and close. And I'm just gonna make a drawing of a sphere right here. And I'm going to extend it to this frame right here. So I drew it on this frame and I'm going to extend it to here by pressing F5 right there. And then with animate turned on, let's see here, animate on, I'm going to use the move tool to kind of generate a keyframe right there. And then at the end, I'm just going to hold shift and move it right there. So Without this ease out and ease in, it's going to look like that as it lands, which is pretty boring, you know? Um, typically, there's there's times where you want to have even keyframes like this drawn out for an animation like this, but usually you're going to save that for really subtle movements and things like that. So kind of back to the matter at hand here, I have this animation right here. And so we're kind of back to our ease out and ease in right here. You can see that it starts slow, speeds up, and then kind of reaches this end conclusion right there. And having, so this is an option right here, where once we reach this keyframe right in the middle where it's at its maximum velocity right here, you have the option, sorry, you have the option to have no motion blur or anything like that, which is what we see right here, where the ball has no squash and stretch. There's kind of nothing going on right there. And this can be okay. I think I think almost all the time I'm gonna encourage at least a little bit of squash and stretch right here. But if you're going for something really naturalistic, and let's say this is animated on twos for the most part, other than right here we're animated in threes, is um, for, how do I say this? If, if you're working in ones, for instance, you can kind of get away with not using this stuff as much because it's going to be a higher frame rate and there's going to be less blurring between frames right here. So we have the non-example right here. And now we're going to compare. We have what's called the simple smear right here. So you can see that that maximum velocity frame that's right here, we're taking the ball and we're kind of stretching it out right there. And so all the other frames are exactly as they were, but on that frame right there, it stretches. And so let's click off of this. And so that's, this is going to be the simple smear right here. And so you can see right there with a the simple smear, it kind of exaggerates the movement a little bit. And we're, we're starting to kind of introduce some stylization here. And um, it's, it's kind of a fun thing that happens. Let's see here. So next up, so we have multiple options on how we can approach this here. So that's the simple smear. 
So next up, we have the motion blur. And so the motion blur example that I'm drawing right here, so a motion blur example might look something like that, that also has some action lines incorporated into it, is kind of what this is replicating in real life. In film, film is shot at 24 frames per second, and the shutter speed is usually at um, 1 60th of a second. And so if you're shooting some kind of action sequence in live action film, Let's say someone's moving their hand rapidly in front of the screen. Um, if their hand is moving so rapidly that that one sixtieth of a second um, doesn't kind of capture the hand in perfect clarity, what you'll see in film is there'll be kind of like a blur that happens within that hand's rapid movement here. And a lot of the times it kind of looks like this. And this can also be called um, multiple ex exposure right here, meaning that we're kind of seeing it kind of stretched out over multiple frames. And I guess all of these, when you really get down to it, are, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Are trying to replicate that, that phenomenon right there. So here's the example where we have action lines and then a little bit of multiple exposure motion blur right here. And one thing with action lines, is I encourage, and we'll see more examples of this. I have a whole another example that's um, a hand drawn out, is the placement that you use for your action lines is really important here. I usually try not to use too many action lines right here. Like I think this is the kind of thing where this is probably the most I would use. Typically, I might even have this ball have one up here, one at the bottom, and maybe like maybe one in the middle. Um, and right here I did four, but if you do like seven action lines or something like that, it can start to look a little bit clunky in there. So this is the action lines example right there. And then finally, probably my favorite is the smear right here. This wasn't my best drawing. I was kind of using my Antos tablet for this rather than the Cintiq. But with the smear, again, we're kind of replicating the motion blur and you're kind of taking these points and kind of stretching it out um, like that. And we'll kind of see some more examples of the smear right here. And so this is the way the smear looks right there. And let's turn them all on at the same time so that we can, oops, so that we can see them all in motion right here, right next to each other. So you can see in the top, we have none. Right here, we have the simple smear. Right here, we have the motion blur plus the action lines. And then right there, we have the smear. It's a little easier to tell when they're one at a time. You know, when they're all together like this, it can be a little bit difficult to compare. But let's just compare each one to uh, no motion blur right here. So right here, we have the smear. I think my smear lines are not perfect right there, but you kind of get the idea. All right, so here we have the motion blur with the action lines. And finally, right here, we have the simple smear. And so again, this is kind of something, especially when you're kind of going for something that's a little more stylized, something like that, that this can be a really great thing to kind of employ into your animations. And you also have separate to these, um, or you can combine it, is you can do squash and stretch, which is where for that middle frame, uh, this ball would kind of elongate out and instead of like some replicating motion blur, for instance, we're kind of, we're going to draw it more ovular. <laughs> That's a terrible drawing, but you get the idea. And we've talked about squash and stretch before. So moving beyond the, the ball right here, I have another example. So let me turn that off. And what I have here is another animation. Let's do the none. And so this is going to be a simpler animation right here. It's a hand. So a more complicated thing to draw. But you can see here's the, the frame count right here. So we start at the bottom at one. And we go to frame two. So there's a very small difference right there between frame one, frame two. Then there's a lot of movement once we get to frame three. So we're having a lot of movement there. And then this is an overshoot animation. And again, when you have an animation that's got a lot of weight or impact to it, sometimes you, instead of in-betweening, from one extreme to the other, which is indicated by these black lines right here. You want to overshoot it, go past it, and then kind of come back and land because it's almost like the hand has too much force and 
the muscles have to kind of contract at the end to reach its final destination here. So we're on frame three right here. Then we're going to go to frame four, which is actually past our extreme. So up here, five is right here. And then we're kind of resting back to our main point right there. So just to, to show this on loop right here, you can see that the hand's moving up, but then it overshoots the, the final keyframe and then it comes back to it right here. So imagine that for your dance party assignment, you have a character kind of lifting up their hand with like a lot of gusto here. You, I, I would think that the overshoot is something that you should kind of consider for kind of motions like that right there. And so this is an overshoot without any motion blur at all to it. So if we look at this frame right there, that's the third keyframe where you can see there's the biggest dis distance between in-betweens and there's no motion blur happening right there. And so right here, I have an example where I kind of did the same thing where I did the multi-exposure with the action lines right here. And you can see on the action lines, I have a strong action line right here for kind of where the hand is towards its medius, like right there, and then a little bit right there, and then they get fainter out here. And notice that these action lines are kind of tracing the, the line of movement of the hand right here. So instead of being like a straight line, there's a little bit of a curve to it because the, the motion has a little bit of, a, um, of an arc to it right there. Um, and I was able to kind of do that just by turning on onion skinning and kind of tracing forward and backwards. Let me, there we go. Tracing forwards and backwards through the frames right there. You can see the action line kind of connects through the knuckle right there. And so we're kind of curving it right there. And so this will be the animation with multi-exposure with action lines right there. And you can tell that it has a very different feel than if it has no action lines at all right there. OK, and then next up, we have action lines only. So this time, I don't have any motion blur or multi-exposure. I just have the same action lines in there. OK. And then finally, we have, I said smudge here, the smear, um, where in the in-between, I drew it like this. And so right here, you're for the smear, you're kind of almost doing um, motion blur, but kind of finding key components of the, the drawing to kind of highlight right here. And a lot of times, you just kind of have to feel it out. You know, um, when I'm kind of dealing with smears, I'm kind of drawing it loose the first time, and usually I need to kind of a few times before I kind of land on something that looks really good. But you can see like right here, like at the base of the hand is smearing out. And then these knuckles, the end is, ends of the fingers right here are areas where it's kind of getting extended right there. So you can see right there, it kind of helps it, all of these kind of help accentuate the movement and are really helpful, particularly when you're animating at low frame rates. They become a little less necessary when you're animating and twos and in ones, but this is animated mostly in threes right here, except for in twos right there, um, when it's kind of getting closer together on the landing spot. And these can become a lot more helpful here. So let's just kind of cycle through these again. So we have none. So this is what it looks like with no motion blur at all. We have the multi-exposure with the action lines right there. Then we have the lines only. And then finally, we have the smudge, smear, sorry.